Tesla smashed Q2 deliveries, over 466,000 vehicle in deliveries, taking everybody off guard. That is a sheesh moment. Like literally everybody thought they're gonna do like 440,000, 450,000. I included myself was like 446,000, but for over 466,000. That's a sheesh right there. But guys, it doesn't stop there because with this beat, with this crazy delivery numbers, comes with the crazy earnings per share for Q2. So in this video, I'm gonna predict what my EPS is going to be, as well as the stock price. So if you guys are ready, smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, man. Let's go. So before we get into the stock price prediction chart quarter by quarter, I want you guys to take a look at these price history charts because it's important. And I also wanna know who made this chart because this is free. Whoever made this chart, and this is live, this is real time data about the, the prices of each vehicle. Whoever you are, man, shout out to you. And if you guys wanna see this chart as well, link in the description. So let's look at the price for the Model S, and I think you guys will find it very interesting here. Starting with the Plaid, in the beginning of this year, like literally 10 days, 11 days in, Tesla slashed prices from 136,000 all the way down to the beginning of Q2 to 105,000. Thousand twenty five thousand dollars slashed. That's just insane. But if we do look, they have increased prices back to up to almost hundred and nine thousand. So really, and they increased it by about four thousand, which is great news because this quarter deliveries for S and X was doubled compared to Q one. So you guys already know that margins are gonna be nice for this quarter. Let's look at the long range here. I mean, wow, hundred and five thousand. Literally, they brought the price down for Plat the same price as the long range, but the long range went all the way down to 85,000. Man, I wish I was in the US, man, I can get a Tesla. I mean, that, this was probably the best time to get a Tesla. That's just absolutely insane. Now the price is up to about 88,000, 89,000. So again, they slapped on about three to 4,000 on top of that as well. So that's really nice. That's really good. And just for the record guys, each block here is a quarter, right? So we have 1, 1, 2023, Q1, Q2. That's one of the reasons why I love this chart. Now that's the S, let's look at the X because in terms of production and deliveries, they're in their own class. So let's take a look at the X. Oh my God, look at the dip in, look at the dip. It was, the plaid was at 139,000, dips all the way down to 105,000. 30 grand drop, wow. That's just insane. But it did bounce back up now to 108 and a half thousand. So they increased it about again, three to 4,000. And the same story with the long range from 121,000 down to 95,000. Now it's all the way to 89, 89 and a half thousand. Sorry guys, I don't have my glasses with me today. So things are not crystal clear for me. But nonetheless, a four grand increase. So that's really good news when it comes to the margins for Q2. This is, this is gonna be an interesting Q2. Let's look at the big chunk, the Model 3 and the Model Y. Let's start out with the Model 3 because we know that Model 3 is not doing that well. And Look Bruh. at this, look at that. They haven't recovered. They haven't even increased prices that much on it. Look at the performance, Model 3 performance from 63,000 down to 53,000, 10 grand drop. And th that's just insane. They did increase it a couple hundred dollars to 53 and a quarter. I mean, not much of an increase, but I mean, guess it'll help with margins a little bit. I mean, it's still less than Q1s. So that's a little bit of a concern when it comes to Model 3. But the standard range from 47,000 dipped down to 39,000. Ah, that's just, that's just crazy. It's up now to over 40,000, but still, it, it won't, it, it'll help just tiny, tiny bit. I don't think Model 3 is gonna make much of a difference compared to Q1 in terms of margin. So let's see what will happen. And the reason why Model 3 is not performing that well is because Model Y, I mean, it's, it, the prices have gone so similarly cheap or the same price ranges, then why would you get a Model 3 at this point? Just get a Model Y. I mean, when I look at prices in Toronto, they're almost the same prices. I would be a fool not to buy a Model Y. So really this is mostly catabolism. It's not that people don't want a Model 3 anymore. People just tune in for the Model Y because it's the same price and it's bang for your buck. Who wouldn't do that? Now, speaking about the Model Y, let's take a look at that because that's the main thing. If we can have an increase in that, 
then that'll make the biggest impact onto the stock price per unit sold and on the margin. So if you guys are ready, let's take a look. I would say smash the like button, but later. All right, Model Y. Oh my goodness, look at that drop and the recovery isn't that great. The Model Y performance from 69,000 all the way down to 54,000. And now it's up a little bit to maybe 54 and a half. So only a thousand bucks more. This will help with margins, but again, that's, oof, I don't know. This is gonna be very interesting to see. Long range all wheel drive from 66,000 down to 50,000. Now it's up to 50 and a half thousand. I mean, that's not gonna help with the margins at all. And then we have the standard all wheel drive from 49,000 down to 47,000. Now it's up a little bit to 47, almost 48,000. So. The margins, because of the S and X and they sold more of it and they did increase the most of it, will help the margins. And since the Model 3 and Model Y, they increased it just a tiny bit, it could make an effect. But nonetheless, these are like all-time low prices, right? I mean, these are like low prices for Model 3 and Model Y. So we shouldn't be too optimistic when it comes to margins. I mean, I do think it's still gonna be more than Q1 because they just did so much in deliveries and economy and scale and all, but these prices are not as high as they were before. I mean, just look at the Model Y, it's only slightly a bit higher. Not too much of a difference compared to S and X, those ones are, you know, enough that you can make a good dent and that's gonna make a good dent. But the Model 3 and Model Y, I think that's gonna, be very interesting to see what's gonna happen in Q2. Now, that's what the data shows. Let's go to the stock price prediction chart and let's see what the revenue will be, the profits will be, my EPS prediction, and as well as the most important part, the stock price. So if you guys are ready, smash that like button. So here's a stock price prediction chart for every quarter. Everything here is straight to the point, but let's go over it so you guys know what's going on. For average vehicles sold, I did increase it to 45,000. From 44,600 bucks per unit to 45,000 because of the SNX, and the the slight increases from the Model 3 and Model Y. Again, it's gonna be interesting to see what this number is going to actually be, but let's see. Automotive credits, 450 million. Services and other revenues, about 2 billion. The profits of that will be 180 million. Leasing revenue, 550 million. Leasing profits, 226 million. Yes, it is slightly decreasing even quarter by quarter because we're in this weird economy and I prefer to be conservative with this leasing number. I put vehicle gross profits here of about 18.5%. Again, keeping in concern conservative here and being very cautious. Total energy revenue and profits. This is going to surprise all of us, okay? Like I, I put here 1.8 billion for the revenue and 216 million for the profits. Um, I won't be surprised if it's over 2 billion, but for sure it's gonna be a surprising number for everybody. Just like how delivery was, because energy is growing at, a, at an extremely fast rate. So I won't be surprised if it's over 2 billion, but let's see what will happen. Operating cost of almost 1.9 billion, taxes 200 million, stock-based compensation of 400 million. And as you guys already know, shares of standing here is being diluted too, because it is. So that's all you need to know for now. Let's go ahead and put the delivery numbers for Q2 and let's see what we'll get for revenue, profits, EPS. If you guys are ready, again, smash that like button. All right, so they delivered about 466,140 vehicles and bam, look at all that numbers coming, I love it. Total vehicle revenue, almost reaching 21 billion. Total vehicle profits, again, 18.5%, that's what it is, almost reaching 3.9 billion. And here is the holy grail part that I think what's gonna happen for the revenue. 25 billion, 760 million dollars, net income gap, almost reaching 2.9 billion. In. If we add the compensation, stock-based compensation to that, we get almost over $3.2 billion in non-GAAP. And that's the important part. We look at this number for earnings and beatings. This is what we look for, the non-GAAP. The EPS in non-GAAP, it looks like it's going to be $0.94. Cents. Right now, Wall Street is think, saying $0.82 cents right now. They may keep increasing it, maybe reaching $0.90 cents by end of this week or right before the earnings call because that's what they do. But $0.94, cents, that's what I think what could happen. $0.94, cents, keep this number in mind. 94 EPS is going to be my prediction for Q2. Let's see what will happen. I mean, if we do increase the vehicle course profits to 18.8%, which and I, I don't think that's going to happen. But nonetheless, if that happens, $0.96. Cents. But no, I'm just going to keep it at $0.94. Cents. Curious Peggy or Peggy is saying $0.94 cents Q2 EPS. That's my prediction. Let's see what's going to happen. Nonetheless, 
it looks like it it's going to be a beat anyways across the board because no one expected 466,000 vehicles and they are slightly increasing prices on each vehicle too and energy is coming in so it's gonna be a beat for sure one thing i forgot to mention here guys is the probably the most important thing that i forgot to mention is the operating margin 11.9 percent so if this happens that means q1 was the bottom we've already bottom in margins and from now on it's gonna keep going higher and higher unless we go into a depression or a very bad recession then that's a whole different story but i do expect i am suspecting that this quarter is going to be the year it's going to be more than q1 meaning that q1 was a bottoming for operating margin for tesla so let's see what will happen 94 cents that's my eps number let's see what the stock price would be now if they do 94 cents that would mean they would beat the 82 cents the 85 cents the 90 cents eps that the analysts predict or the wall street predicts if that happens if it's a beat then we could see a good roar into the stock price. Right now, the stock price is around like 75, 76 PE. If they beat this, if they do this, this I can see it going to 80 PE easily, reaching 285 bucks per share or a market cap of over $900 billion. Heck, if there's over optimism and the earnings call was great guidance and operating margin has bottomed in Q1 and it's an up from here, then we could probably see a PE of 85 going to 303 bucks per share and i think that's the cap i think you know 303 bucks per share i mean some are saying stock price of 320 i mean gary black shout out to him that would be a pe of about a 90 321 and that will be a market cap of over 1 trillion and this could happen this could actually happen but keeping it conservative i'm going to keep it at 80 pe around 285 bucks per share over 900 billion dollars in market cap still a sheesh moment Sheesh moment indeed. And if you guys are curious about what Q3 and Q4 could be, this is what I think that could be. In Q3, 500,000 in vehicle deliveries could be closer to maybe, you know, 495, but 500,000, just keeping it for now. Obviously, this will change as we keep going forward. When we get more data about Shanghai and, you know, Austin and Berlin, obviously this will change. But for now, 500,000 vehicle deliveries, gross profits of 18.8%. A little increase in the vehicle average selling price to 45.5. Bam, look at that. We got a Q1 revenue of almost $28 billion. Net income gap almost reaching 3.3 billion. Net income non gap almost reaching 3.7 billion. A non gap EPS for Q3. Q3 a dollar and six 85 pe 302 bucks per share market cap almost reaching a trillion that's just insane look at the operating margin 12.6 percent that's that would be crazy if that's if that will happen in q3 sheesh moment q4 i'm saying a whopping 540,000 vehicle deliveries average selling price of 46,000. a little increase there as well vehicle gross profits of 19.2 percent we would get a q4 revenue of over 30 billion dollars net income gap over 3.8 billion non-gap over 4.2 billion eps of a dollar and 22 give it a 90p that's 324 bucks per share end year and a trillion dollar valuation now obviously we could dive more into q3 q4 but this is more towards q2 nonetheless i could see realistic price ranges this year end of this year 305 to 360 about a 47 percent growth year over year from 2022 to 2023 that's absolutely insane total deliveries in 2023 will be over 1.9 million vehicles that would be insane if that happened. So let's see. But this video is more towards Q2. And guys, remember, 94 cents is my EPS. Let's see if that'll happen or not. All a prediction and a prediction alone. So take all this with a grain of salt. But do remember the number 94 cents. Let's see what will happen. But you know what it is interesting to know what could happen for Tesla stock if FSD gets licensed out to other automakers? It's a sheesh moment. And I made it in this video over here. Obviously, all speculation, take it with a grain of salt, but it's extremely entertaining. And if it becomes true, then it's a sheesh moment. Check it out. You won't be disappointed. Get your, I bought the, if you guys bought the Tesla dip, then you need this shirt, period. All right. Subscribe for more and I shall see you guys in the next video. See ya.